Here we have an interface between two different materials. I'll call this material number one, which is air, and here is material number two, which is a perfect electric conductor, which means that sigma is equal to infinity. First of all, if the skin depth is equal to infinity, we know this. Uh, we know it's a good conductor because that ratio, the loss tangent, is going to be a large number. And for a good conductor, alpha is equal to square root of pi f mu sigma, and the skin depth is one over alpha. So if we put in infinity here then we'll have infinity in the denominator here for the skin depth. So the skin depth will be zero. So there's no uh, electric fields in the PEC. Here E is equal to zero. Now when there is a plane wave normally incident on an interface, that means it's propagating straight at the interface. That's the propagation direction. And we can, let's just say our E field is pointing upward here in the way we've drawn it for our incident wave. Now if we know that the E field inside the material 2 is equal to 0, then I can write the tangential E field in material 2 is 0. Then from the boundary conditions we know that the tangential E field is equal on the outside, on, on either side of this interface. So here we can write E tan in material 1 is equal to 0 as well. So, and this must be true for all time at the interface. And in order to achieve 0 for all time at the interface, it means that the reflection, there has to be a reflection that's produced at the interface, and it has to be equal and opposite to the incident wave. So maybe I'll put an I here for incident. Here we'll get E reflected, and that is equal to E, and I'll say tangential, is minus the tangential field right at the interface of the incident wave. And if the reflected field is zero right at, uh, is equal and opposite, we get zero. When we add them together, we're going to get zero right at the interface and it's going to set up a standing wave pattern. And the standing wave pattern will have zero at the interface, and then it's going to repeat itself every half wavelength, and so forth. We're going to get zeros every half wavelength. So the nearest null to the interface, which is right here, would have to be half of a wavelength. Uh, let me see, oh yeah, that was given as 2 meters. We could set that equal to lambda over 2. And we're asking what is the frequency of the wave. So we have lambda is equal to 4 meters. And then we can solve, since we know C is equal to left F lambda, we can say 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by the wavelength, which is 4, is equal to F, which is 75 megahertz.